Hi guys, Rich Bassini from RJBassini.com. Welcome to Reseller News. Um, before I get into the topics of what I um, <clears throat> about the Reseller News, what's going on, I just want to talk a little about um, the controversy with the eBay feedbacks. Uh, it seems like there's been kind of a little talk about that. Uh, I mentioned once before uh, in my earlier videos that um, there was a seller on eBay radio. Matter of fact, let me just get the uh, thing here. Uh, I can even probably play the clip if I can get it to come in clear enough. Um, it was on the Ask Griffin Lee show, you know, you know eBay radio. If you guys want to see, it's in the archives. I think I'll take you over there in a little bit. But um, it's for August 24th and it's show 471 segment 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it seems like there's been a lot of controversy over here talking about feedbacks. And we know this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, however, you know, will things change with that? You know, where the buyers uh, can leave negative feedbacks and the sellers can't leave the buyers a negative feedback changes. That's totally up to eBay. It's their website, their company, and they're going to do what they want to do with it. And so to speak, you know, the old saying is, on, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. If you don't like their policies or you don't like the way they do things, then you go to another selling platform. Um, that's basically the way it goes. Uh, there, And, you know, with that talk about the um, buyers, uh, you know, leaving feedbacks for the seller, you know, negative feedbacks to the sellers, uh, the way they look at it, from what I understood the uh, radio uh, segment that time from eBay Radio, is that they look at that if they are to, um, you know, get on top of the buyers for leaving negative feedback to the sellers, that the buyers will no longer want to do business with eBay, and they will basically threaten eBay and say, we are not coming back anymore, and therefore eBay does not want to lose the buyers because, you know, that's revenue, believe it or not. You know, they had, I think they had a segment where one buyer, or to use as an example, did $10,000 in business with eBay, and uh, they didn't want to lose that buyer. Uh, they'd rather lose, you know, they'd rather have a seller, uh, so to speak, you know, they'd rather lose a seller, so to speak, than to have a buyer go off, uh, you know, eBay's platform, you know. So that's how they're kind of like looking at it from what I understand or what I gathered from the uh, eBay radio. Anyway, there's quite a bit of things going on. Uh, you know, I could go on and talk to you about everything and anything about eBay and, um, and Amazon too. But, you know, I get a lot of my information from the uh, Google. I get the Google alerts on eBay and uh, I get all these, you know, updates and stuff like that on a daily basis. Um, this is just... A touch of the, you know, a touch of the little stuff, you know, of of what I get. It's just like a little minute thing. There is so much stuff going out there. I could be doing this here for hours on end. So I try to pick topics that may be of interest to you guys, especially if you don't follow up on it. Uh, I do. I try to keep in touch, you know, keep on top of these things. I try to, uh, for the most part. I always keep saying in my, uh, my, you know. When I do my videos, I like to do a weekly, either weekly roundup or a daily, uh, you know, a reseller news. And I haven't had any really, uh, there wasn't really a good time to do it at this point in time because I got a whole bunch of stuff I'm doing outside of, you know, answering emails, uh, you know, doing research on my eBay listings and stuff like that. There's some things I have to correct on there, uh, you know. So, you know, time is very limited. Uh, right now it's 1243 over here in the East Coast. I'm in New York. And uh, as you can see, we're going towards the one o'clock afternoon here. And I accomplished a few things this morning. Not enough for me. Um, with this type of business, to me, it's like, as far as I'm concerned, it's like a 24 hour, seven day a week thing here, as far as I'm concerned. That's at least how many hours you need to get caught up on certain things. Might be over, over exaggerating a little, but to some point, you do need time uh, to put into this business. But anyway, <clears throat> without further ado, I'm not gonna read the whole captions. Uh, I'm just going to go with them, tell you where I got the information from, and then it's up to you guys to read it because I'm not going to read verbatim. Uh, I'm just going to pick out little topics. I picked out a couple things that um, I thought might be of interest to you guys. If you don't follow up on these things, I just thought I'd share it with you. That's why I do the reseller news. And without further ado, I got this information off of Tame Bay, and it's over here. And, and the topic is over here: Amazon. Own private label sales has soared in 2017. <clears throat> well, that should be no surprise anyway. And then if you go on over here, it says reading 
Uh, Amazon started off with a book, as a book retailer, selling goods published by other firms and expanding into uh, expanding as a retailer into other uh, verticals over time. And I think we all know what the story with that is. Um, I get another magazine here. It's called the Internet Retailer. And <laughs> I just went really quick here. just want to go really quick. Uh, I read a, a, a topic here, a segment in this magazine, and uh, it's pretty interesting. But, you know, when you think about how they're growing in leaps and bounds, that company, uh, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, this is the Amazon, Amazon, Amazon over here. That's the story of it, right? And uh, <clears throat> I like, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, it just goes over here. It says a few days before this issue went to press, news broke that Amazon Z CEO Jeff Bezos has surpassed Bill Gates as the world's richest person. The news wasn't surprising, given that uh, Amazon stock has soared more than 35% over the past year to more than $1,000 from around $750 last July. As the stock price risen has risen, there's been there's been scores of stories written about how Amazon is poised at some point to be the first to be the first or at least among the first first companies with a trillion dollar marketing cap or market cap it's right here right over here in case you don't believe me um, where is it? right here it's right well you can't see because it's very small but it's right in this article here okay and that's what I'm reading it from I'm not reading no sort this I'm reading right for this here I didn't write this here so people say this guy know what he's talking about. I'm reading it off a magazine, uh, the Internet Retailer, and um, it says via Amazon might demonstrate. Uh, Amazon might was uh, demonstrated in July when its sales record Internet Retailer estimated 2.41 billion in sales during the annual Prime Sales event, the Sales Day event. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. But could you imagine that uh, a trillion dollar market cap? Unbelievable. Amazon, like I said, they're they're growing in leaps and bounds. It's amazing. And um, hey, kudos to him. You know, there's a guy started out doing a basic, you know, a business like that, selling books according to the story. Uh, you know, on Amazon, you know, I guess through a retail site, whatever. And uh, look what it bloomed into. Okay, but hey, <clears throat> I wish him all the best. You know, and he he's doing good. Good for him. I'm happy for him. Anyway, and then it talks over here again uh, on this here. You can see this article here. It says over here in the first half of 2017, it's reported that the toy just basically told you $2 billion worth of its own products. Um, that's what they're talking about as far as Amazon owned private label sales. So apparently, it seems like they're going to go towards that if they haven't already. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of like going to go a little back and forth. I just want to give a little insight in certain things. This one here I picked up. It says, what percentage of your sales do you make via your own website, uh, web store? Now, um, for those, I, I'm on eBay, but I don't have an eBay web store, uh, an eBay store. Uh, the reason why I don't have it is, like I said, if you guys don't know who I am, uh, I'm Rich Bassini. Uh, my eBay user ID is shop RJ Bassini for great deals on eBay. That's why I go under. Um, I don't have a store. Uh, I am the frugal retailer. Now, a lot of people might say, well, if you're too frugal, you're not going to make money because it takes money to make money. I look at it this way. I don't really warrant, to me personally, I don't really warrant to have an eBay store, and I don't need to have an additional $15, $20 a month to have a store where it's displaying the same things as I would as a regular on a regular site. Now, for those who go in to an eBay store, you don't want to go into that. They have your own. Oh, I got an eBay store. That's fine. You know, if you got the money, and the revenue to, you know, maintain it. I know there's little perks here and there with it. But you know what? As a top-rated seller, you still get perks whether you have a store or not. As far as I'm concerned, the way it works for me, it works for me that way. Okay? Other people may say, "Well, you didn't really, you know, look into it fully to see what the, all the perks are." I don't need it right now. Okay? I don't need an additional bill. I got a big fat bill coming up at the end of this month. Okay? <laughs> as every month, uh, eBay sometimes the <laughs> the eBay the, you know the eBay bill sometimes succeeds. Or over succeeds your uh, what your 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 revenue coming in. You know what I'm saying. So sometimes there's a short you know short uh, windfall there as far as money, uh, where you'll have to tap into the kitty to pay the eBay bills if you get my drip making no sales. So anyway, um, for those who have a, a web store or don't have a web store, or whatever, you know that's totally up to you. Uh, me, I have a website. I have a basic website and I use basic software to uh, create the website and I'm just going to get the box to show you what it is really quick. I should have had a prep. I'm sorry folks. This is what I use guys to create my web store uh, website. It's called Serif Plus 
X5. Well, web, well Serif Web Plus X5. Good package. You could create your website with it. It says the complete business website designer. You can easy to use. E-commerce all in one. Design, photo, editing, more. It says over here, bonus included, dot com. Well, you get 12 months of hosting if you use there. I have a nice hosting company, and it says over here, email designer with 300 plus templates. I didn't load that in yet. Uh, I just wanted basically to get the, um, the uh, you know, sort my, my website up, so I use this. I was using Microsoft Front Page 2002. I still have it. I use that to create my um, templates for the eBay listings. But if you want to create a website uh, and you want to use software, I got this here, believe it or not, from um, Walmart. I think I paid $10 for it total with the free shipping. Um, I don't know because I think they said the they're not having support for this anymore, but that's a lot of malarkey because they have a number where you can call up and you still can't get it, but you got to go to a different channel. I haven't used the support uh, so far. Uh, it's pretty cut and dry. I like it a lot easier than um, Front Page 2002. It's a lot more user-friendly, okay? It's, it's more intuitive like that there, user-friendly. So you could cut and paste, move things around. Uh, no HTML required right here. Another good thing right here, see, folks? No HTML required. I'm not an HTML guy. I know a little of it, know very basic of it, but it can get complex if you go into really, you know, sophisticated stuff. I don't have the time to learn that right now. Um, that could be, God knows how long that would take. But if you want to get something like this here, it's and I'm not getting, this is not a, uh, an endorsement. They're not, this company is not paying me, Serif is not paying me to do this endorsement. I'm just throwing it out there to you guys. Uh, I like it, okay? They have other brands, they have another one, I think the X6 or X7. I know they have different ones coming up, you know, where you could go upgrade. This is fine for me. You can get these on eBay too if you shop around, look. But that's what I use. And the other thing I use to create my website, and I'm just going to show you really quick because I don't want to take too much time because this is the reseller news, but I guess this can be a segue into it as well. I mean, it is all related. If you go over here to 3IX is what I use for my hosting. Now, people might not like it. They may say, oh, I heard of them. I'm not really crazy about the company. That's totally up to you. I've been with 3X, 3IX um, for a number of years now. I like this service. I don't, I had no complaints or qualms with them so far. They've been good to me. So I really can't say I'm not going to sit there bashing them. Um, I got over here for those who want to just get a basic website and it's pretty good for a dollar a month. Uh, you get the Excite plan, which I have. You get 40 gigabytes of uh, space, uh, 100 gigabytes of bandwidth, and you get 50 accounts of pop emails. And uh, I got this here for, again, a dollar a month. Um, there, now people might say, well, what's their domain charges? You know, what do they charge for domain? Domain. Uh, registration, I think it's $14. Oh, yeah, here it is, right here. Uh, it's affordable from just $14.99. Okay, and again, I am not getting any, I'm not endorsing them. I'm just sharing what I use in conjunction with this software. Okay, they are on a, a Linux, they use the Apache Sim, but they are on a Linux system. I know they used to have well, Microsoft where they work with that server and they have a Linux system, Linux server. That's why, from my understanding, that's what they're working with right now. Uh, no problem with it. Fully integratable. It works with me. I have no problem with it. So I'm just trying to tell you. I just figured out. Uh, let me throw that out there. Uh, for those who want to have your own website. Uh, is it a good thing to have a website? Yeah. And I'm going to show you really quick what mine is. Very basic. I did this with web server. With this one here. Web plus. Here it is over here really quick. Um, I, I cut off the uh, sound over here because when you first click it on. Okay. This is how it comes on when you first, when you go to the page, okay? If I refresh the page here, let's see. Let's see what happens. When you click on my page, this is what comes up. You'll hear the music in the background, okay? And then you hear me talking at the bottom here. You can see that right there, all right? All right, so you can see, all right. And you can see me over there talking on the bottom. I did that all through this here. Also, I have over here, this is my website. And that's why I like to have my own website, folks. You could do what you want with it. It's your website, you know what I'm saying? I mean, don't put crazy things on there, like, you know, stupid things, but like this here, for example, check out what's for sale right now, my eBay uh, and Bonanza. Now, you can say, people might say, well, basically all you're doing is it's like a catalyst. You're, you're advertising eBay and Bonanza on your website, and you know, it's gonna direct it to them. It's like kind of like hyperlink, of course. You click on one of these things here, if I'm not mistaken. I think if you click this on, I believe it takes you right there. I don't know. I don't think that happens just yet. But I know over here, um, like, you know, I do the About Us here. I got the services. And then I did, like, the uh, products. Now, the products, 
uh, these are hyperlinked like these things right now sale I'm still working on this website so don't sit there and say wow this is a plain Jane website I know it is a plain Jane website but that's okay but when you hyperlink this here and you click this on I only have what I think three all right there's I'm trying to work a way where I can incorporate more to make it a little fancy but when you click this on as you can see this does hyperlink and it will bring you there okay so it does bring you to the eBay yes does it hyperlink it there sure absolutely so people might say well why would you want a website that all you're going to do is just basically you know direct people that's the whole idea if people land on a website the whole idea is to get them to go to eBay and hopefully will buy well I'm hoping that we'll buy from there um, but that's basically what the uh, the premise behind that is and again if you're if you guys don't have a website and you're looking to go you know build something really quick whatever uh, it's cut and dry like I said you go to 3ix they'll help you out with that there I mean you know they're they're good with that like I said I have no problem the only thing is when you when you do support they don't have the phone support I don't think on this one oh yes they do they do have phone support but uh, they basically for the, the tech part you could also chat as well um, I like them um, I've been using them for years so so far I have no complaints with them okay but anyway uh, that's the deal with that there uh, the only thing is though I found out one thing I just want to share this very quick when it comes to browsers <laughs> I noticed now this is I'm using Firefox I notice I can't toggle back and forth here see like for example it like locks me on here I don't know if that's because the uh, the program is incompatible with that there or there's some kind of uh, issue going on with the uh, Firefox but if I go to yeah as I said earlier if I go back to uh, the Internet Explorer you can see I'm able to toggle back and forth here like for example I can go to home about us service products contact my social this one here I just did like that guys um, again like I said earlier I'm still learning how to work with this here the software it's not that the software is hard <laughs> it's me the developer that's working with this here I mean I'm sure you can make really nice websites with this here this software it's just that you know you got to learn how to be a be more creative but um, as I said earlier this here you can see with the Internet Explorer this is the Internet Explorer 11 I'm using I use both edge at times but this is the Explorer but you can see with different browsers you get different functionalities again when I was on the uh, Firefox I couldn't toggle back like here's my social media here's contact you can see the contact everything works the products I don't have much products the service I offer and about us and home okay so you can see that that part does work now I don't want to keep talking about this here the only thing I will say having your own website is nice because it's like a web website blogs to me it's almost the same thing um, you know you could you could add your own stuff in here you could do little little promos you could do like I did here with the video over here all right you could watch it on YouTube uh, you know and then like I said and then you could add this here uh, this little thing that slides back and forth. I can't, I can't think what they call this again but anyway you know you can see it shows you different things as well I did this here with this website with this uh, software and again it's not the most fancy website but it's you know I'm learning as I go along and the good thing about it, there's no HTML anyway I don't want to keep dwelling on that again you know the deal you can just watch the video go back and watch and you can see for yourself now again we want to do is go over here um, so that we, we covered that topic about having a web store and as you can see you could you could read up on that there again I got this off of Tame Bay right over here this week you can read it you just go to tamebay.com I believe yeah and uh, you can read that story there they got really good stories in there too and they talk a lot about eBay and different things now here we have a, a thing over here eBay raises a controversial <clears throat> topic of feedback again as I talked to you guys once before in my other videos um, as you know eBay is not going to probably from what I read you know heard on the eBay uh, radio show um, <clears throat> who like Rick was talking he's the uh, eBay host and again he's also an employee for eBay uh, like he said that's not going to change anytime soon uh, that's it so you know I know a lot of sellers don't like it and as you, as you can read over here it says eBay sellers no longer have the ability to leave feedback to report a problem with buyers they're restricted on only leaving uh, restricted to leaving only positive feedback while buyers can leave positive negative or neutral feedback for sellers many believe that uh, leaves sellers vulnerable to dishonest trading partners look um, <clears throat> I'll be honest with you I love eBay I like it uh, you know it's good source of income people can make the livings off it you know good livings off it but at least from what I was told and from hearing stories um, yes that part um, 
as a top rate seller, and I think a lot of top rate sellers may feel, you know, they may feel that you know they're being jaded by this here by eBay's uh, policy as far as feedback. They have other things too. Now, this here again, now this one came off of e-commerce bites. So if you want to read the stories for seventh, this is today, September 7th, as you can see, 2017. Einstein is great. This is her website. She puts it out, and you can read all about the eBay thing, uh, about the uh, controversial topic. This also, uh, here's another one, Auction Bytes, from Auction Bytes. Technical issues strike Amazon sellers on Monday. I guess this past Monday. You get a chance to read the whole thing. It says over here, it has something to do with the UK. Update US 2. We're unable to sell for at least 12 hours. That could be a problem. Uh, let's face the facts. If their servers go down, you know, and you're over there, depending on this, see, this is your livelihood, you're making money with it. That could be, that could, that could tweak a person, I would think. You know, 12 hours without sale, you know, without you know, having your web stuff out there, your uh, items promoted or listed on their websites, that would probably uh, tweak me as well. Because, you know, you're losing business, you know. Let's say, all right, you say, well, okay, so Amazon's down. I don't know, maybe you might be a 50-50 guy. You might sell 50% of your merchandise on eBay, 50% of your merchandise on uh, Amazon. But, again, you know, let's say Amazon is the power hitter here where you're making, you know, a good majority of your money. 12 hours, you know, for the day, that's kind of a lot. You know, you don't know. It depends. You may say, well, I might not even get still, so it doesn't matter if it's out for two days, whatever, you know. Who knows? I don't know. But um, it says over here, one reader told e-commerce bites he had a large, a large batch of inventory to list, was unable to list, uh, you know, unable uh, to for at least 12 hours. Here's the message Amazon displayed. We are currently experience, experiencing an issue uh, which is impacting the appearance of, of your listings within the man, uh, within the manage uh, your inventory, whatever, uh, yeah, section seller central, whatever. And then they go on and on and on. Like I said, I'm not going to read these things verbatim. You can go to e-commerce bites and you can read these articles. There's plenty of things she comes up with. Uh, very informative. I love e-commerce bites. I subscribe to them. I get their updates. And uh, every time they have anything that's new that transpires, right? You know, like on a flash, they send them up. I get updates on this stuff here. Uh, it really is good. Um, then over here, if you look over here, the EKG. Uh, I like to see since Friday August first. I had some sales for which and they talk. eBay telephone support not available at this time. They have like little captions on the side here. Very informative website. It really is. I really love this website. Um, I can't, I can't give it enough praise because, like I said, you can read. And then they've also got blog, uh, blog archives where you can go back uh, to 2005 and you can read some of the things that people post on there. A lot of people do post on there. If you have to register to be on a website, but you can leave posts there. I have in the past. Okay. Now, here's something that's a little that caught my eye. Um, here's one here. This came off of the New York Post. Uh, Mom buys screen protector on eBay and gets her one instead. Now... <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up, folks. I mean, I. it is what it is, okay? I don't make this stuff up. This, you can see here, this is from the New York Post. Uh, I don't know if it has today's date on it. <laughs> yes, well, there, this is September 5th. Like I said, I have old stuff here, like, you know, like a day old, whatever. But, you know, I have tons and tons of emails. Um, I get e a whole bunch of emails from all different sources and stuff like that. And I can't keep up with that, I'll be honest with you guys. But this is kind of crazy, right? You know, for this for people who haven't, who don't really get a chance to hear the news about this. Here, you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna hear this on TV. You know, about the mom who buys a screen protector gets her one instead. I don't know. I mean, you know, you might, you might not. Um, I don't. I'm not much of a news take as far as like watching regular television news. I spend 99.9% .9 of my time on the computer. So I know it sounds crazy. I say this guy doesn't have a life but if you're doing a business like this you do spend a lot of time and you devote a lot of time to it anyway but that I just thought I'd share that with you and uh, <laughs> you can read the story over there the woman spent three dollars on ice for on a shockproof glass screen protector for an iPhone on uh, hey she should have went to me I'm selling iPhone stuff I got those uh, screen protectors well that's the tempered glass so I'm not selling that one but anyway uh, and then the, the story goes on you know what you got we, we know the rest of it so that's one and then the other thing is over here um, this one I found kind of odd. Uh, Tame Bay put it out. <clears throat> eBay starts suspending sellers because buyers ask the question. Your, EK, your eBay account has been restricted. Okay. eBay are handing out suspensions to buyers. Okay. But, you know, it's kind of like a deceptive thing. It says eBay starts suspending sellers because buyers ask the question. So, I don't know. You would think it would be reverse here it says eBay are handing out suspicious uh, suspensions to buyers frankly I was a bit taken back this week 
at the extent uh, of the latest sanctions to be imposed and that's because eBay aren't just dingling, uh, ding, ding, dinging sellers, also uh, eBay are also applying sanctions to buyers too. And it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to keep reading it. I'm getting a horse throat over here. I'm getting dry throat. <laughs> but you can read that there too. Uh, it's, I, I find it kind of amusing. It's not amusing to the point where I laugh at it, but it just seems funny like, you know, how every time you turn around, there's always some kind of change or modifications going on within the eBay structure. And, you know, I guess change is good, I guess, at times. But it is what it is. Um, then you got over here, right, same thing. Uh, that's the same. Okay, I got twice here. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I clicked that on twice. And that's the back to the site. Um, you know, you guys, like I said, people out there um, that deal with eBay in, in regards to the... Uh, I, I just did a video uh, about, the, you know, the, uh, talking about buyers leaving buyers feedbacks, respond to buyers feedbacks. Look, you know, as I said in, in that other one, in that other video, you know, there's all different ways to handle things. Uh, I, I told a story that I had with the buyer. Uh, they ordered an item from me and it arrived broken. And I said, like I stated earlier, um, I wasn't upset. I think the buyer misunderstood me and took it that I was, you know, coming off very brash and harsh and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't upset about the, of the seller. I was upset what how the seller received the item. And I reached out to the buyer because it was not long after that. I mean, you know, the buyer didn't say anything. I mean, as far as they said, you know, they, they, we had our, we had our, you know, communications back and forth, but I had no idea, uh, even making good, re, you know, refunding the buyer the money and everything. They got everything, full shipping and plus the, I paid for the return shipping, uh, still left me a negative feedback. And I was taken back by it because I said, geez, I apologize. I said, I was sorry. So they got the, the, all their money back and plus I paid for return shipping, which I didn't have to because usually the buyer pays for return shipping. Uh, needless to say, I had to put a claim in for it. But, you know, I reached out to the buyer. I explained to the buyer, you know, I apologize. I said, I'm sorry if it came off the wrong way. You misunderstood me. I said, I wasn't, under, I wasn't upset with you. I was upset that, you, you know, you received the item damaged. Basically, and I even said it to in the message, I'm upset with the United States Postal Service for how they delivered the thing. Because, I mean, this thing was so packed. I mean, you would have to drop it off, uh, you know, out of a... The, yeah, at least six feet high so it may break it I don't know it had to be dropped from something high but when I seen the photos of the item damaged it really bothered me and I you know I was like frustrated because you know here I here I am I go through it I put the gla fragile glass stickers on it you know be careful handle with care please do not drop or crush and the thing got there and it was broken so I wasn't you know upset with the buyer so to speak I was upset at the postal service and uh, I know it came out wrong but the point I'm getting across is if you reach out to the buyer you know, be very apologetic. Uh, you know, look, they may have a good reason too. Okay, uh, like I said in the other, and like I said in my uh, eBay, uh, the last video I did about responding to buyers feedbacks. You know, you may, us, you, me as a seller, whatever, we may do things sometimes haphazardly. You know, maybe we sent something out wasn't packaged right. Maybe we, maybe something, maybe the item that was supposed to be. Uh, working was non-working. Maybe it's supposed to be sold for parts, and we sold it for regular, just as a regular uh, item. You know, we got to be careful too. Uh, I mean, I caught myself uh, at what time I had. In fact, I had a situation where I almost sent the wrong item out, and what happened was I gave it to the letter carrier, you know, my mailman, to pick it up. It was two packages. They had the reverse address on them, and it's a good thing he was still in the area because you know when he gets it, he scans them in right away. So. Uh, I brought him out. I came home after I gave him to the letter carrier. I looked at the two documents and I looked. I said, Oh, this person's getting this this item, this person, and it was reversed. I had to go grab the guy before he took it off to the post office, make the switch, and everything turned out good. I could have had a bad experience that. It all depends again how the buyer is. The buyer could have said, Received the wrong item today and left the neutral or negative. You know, you gotta understand people when they make purchases. They want that specific item. They don't want to. I don't think. I don't think buyers always want to hear excuses. And you know, people will say sometimes, "Don't make an excuse up." Like if you do something wrong, I remember he used to hear an expression on the jobs back in the day when you were, you know, when you were a young guy and stuff like that. If you make a mistake, fess up to it. Don't don't lie for your excuses. Don't make excuses up. Just you know, if you did a mistake, fess up to it. Say, "Hey, I made a mistake," and let it be. But and I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit it. Yes, I almost had that one thing, and thank God it was caught before it was in transit. Okay. 
Um, that was a happy ending to that there because I was able to get it, retrieve it from the mailman, change the label, boom, send it off. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I just wanted to go over that really quick with you guys. Uh, there's more stuff I could put out there for the, for the reseller news, but let me tell you something. We could be here for hours on end talking and I could show you different things. I just try to pick little things. I know it seems like I'm all over the place, but I don't mean to be that way, but I just can't cover all this. It's just too much information. I've ever hear of information overload. There is so much stuff out there. There's no conceivable way, even if I did it for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's no way I can get all this information out. So all I do is I try to take little tidbits of information to share it with you. And I throw it out there and it's up to you guys if you want to read it or not. If you don't want to read it, that's totally up to you. Last thing I want to say, just a little shout out for myself this time. Uh, if, as, you, if, as you can see here, I brought you to my eBay listings. Um, I, I just want to share this with you guys. I, I know it sounds like it's a segue in there. Uh, this is basically for the new people coming in or if you just landed on this channel or if you don't know of me or the items I sell. My name is Rich Bassine from shop uh, from rjbassine.com. If you look at my user ID over here, it's shop rjbassine four great deals. Um, <clears throat> I have a total of two hundred six items left on, on there right now. As you can see, I have a lot of watches looking. Okay, so you probably say, "Well, what's this here? What's this all about?" Watching, but no takers. But here's the thing: the ones that have, I, I want to share this with you guys, in case you're new to my channel. Look, I have a lot of best offers on a lot of the stuff I have, okay? Some things I do have a bite now price, but a good majority of the stuff uh, has a lot of bite now, as you can see here. What I'm, in, what I'm saying to you guys, uh, coming out to, you know, appeal to your, your uh, presence or whatever, please, if you see buy a best offer, make an offer, okay? Uh, you, what's the worst that could happen? I, I went through this before with other people, you know, like at times, you know, in my other videos. You know, just because I, just because you make an offer doesn't mean it's necessarily going to get rejected, okay? As you can see here, I got quite a bit of items here uh, that have best offers on them, okay? You know, and, and you want to know something? Even the ones that don't have it, you could probably inquire about it, you know? Maybe, you know, we could do, work something out. I don't know. I'm just trying to, you know, throw this out there to you guys. When you see best offers, don't hesitate. Try it out. Just w look. For example, I'm using this one here. It's Disney MGM Studios Mickey Mouse Fringe Mat Refrigerator Magnet. I got it for $9.99 with best offer. Okay. Now, if you tell me, if you make an offer saying, I'll say, you know, a dollar ninety-nine, I probably won't take it. I mean, so people might say, well, what would you take for it? It depends what you're offering. You know. Uh, if you're offering, you know, you say instead of $9.99, how about $8.99 or $7.99? Maybe it might be a little leeway to work with. But if, I'm not going to know these things unless people make the offers, okay? Uh, you know, th this is all I can tell you guys. But you can see I do have best offers on quite a bit. Uh, a lot of watches, you know. And, uh, you know, some people take, but <laughs> um, there's a lot of watches here. As you can see, look at this here, okay? But again, uh, if nobody's making any offers, uh, these things will sit here from now till doomsday. Uh, I know there's a lot going on in people's lives uh, with the news. and everything. I don't know if you people are getting caught up with the news. I try not to get too wrapped up into it because it's a distraction. And uh, when you're trying to, you know, commence with a business, trying to get your business out there and trying to work and make money, it's a little hard to sit there and, uh, you know, stay focused. But as you can see, some of them have over here, uh, six, four, three, two, whatever. Uh, you can see here, it goes from six to five to four to three to two, and then it goes down to uh, one, okay? But again, you know, if you guys see stuff out there, please uh, make an offer, okay? I mean, try it out, check it out, you know, don't hesitate. I can't, I can't express it, you know, express it more than that. Uh, I'm willing to work with people. So uh, if you see something you like over here, I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, I don't know what else I can tell you guys. But just check it out and let me know what you think. And uh, if any of that new stuff helped out or anything or you liked about the information about the 3IX, the website, again, I'm not uh, endorsing them. Uh, nobody paid me to do that. There, Nobody contacted me from them. Nobody contacted me from Serif, Web Plus, the company, to, uh, you know, 
uh, promote this this uh, software package. I'm just saying the two in hand in hand is pretty good. Like I said, I think I paid ten dollars for this. I bought it off of Walmart's website, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I got it with free shipping. Um, and it's and it's boxed, and it's it's uh, you know, and it's nice. I mean, it comes in a nice box. It's not like you know something you're buying offline. Uh, and it gets you like a little information here. Uh, the, the pages, well, I think it has the pages on here, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. It has a couple of pages on here. Well, actually, one page, right? Yeah, okay, so it's got the one page. And then, and what else is nice about it, uh, when you take it out, it's well packaged, okay? Um, if I can get it out of here, it's too well packaged. You know, it comes like this here. Let me make this screen bigger, folks, okay? It comes packaged like this, and when you open it up, you know, you get a nice, you get the uh, software item itself. Okay, I'll just cover it there. Um, you get the software item, okay? And they also give you another one here. Uh, I didn't load this one up here. It says uh, high impact emails professional. I didn't load that one up. I'm covering this, folks, because I want my product ID out there in the, you know, YouTube land. Um, you also get over here, Web Plus, uh, 10 free navigational bars, whatever. Well, this is just like an advertisement. Okay, you get that with it, okay? Here's another thing. I'm sorry, I got to cover it up. You get 12 months of uh, 12 months of hosting. I don't know if it's still good. I mean, as far as that, if it's still on it, I don't know. But they give you a, a number on there, a product key number to use it. If you can see, it. there's a lot of glare in here. Okay, and they give you a nice book. Book is in nice condition. Look at that. Look at that. Nice and crisp. It's nice to have textbooks. You know, like books where you could actually read. I don't really like doing too much reading online. But this is a nice book there. It's pretty thick, as you can see. Nice thick manual. Okay. And uh, again, the software, if you guys are interested in it, it's right here. It's uh, Web Plus. You see a little bigger now, Web Plus X5. Um, I bought this again. I bought this off of uh, Walmart's website. And what I like about it is, as you can see, no HTML required, <clears throat> which is nice. And it's got a lot of nice features. It's got a lot of those perks to it, too. You know? And in the back, it tells you the comparisons uh, to different types of things. They got Microsoft Expression. I would use an expression too. They, they work too, expression too. But if you can look back here, well, you can't see because there's too much glare there. But see over here, it tells you like the comparisons, like what they offer. See, this is the Ceph or the, the Web Plus right here. What they have all check marks, you can see, along with the services to the side, as opposed as opposed to the other guys that have very little. Okay, so. Check it out, you know, and uh, this is all the stuff you could do with it. Okay, it's really and it's really easy. I love it. You know what I like about it? I like the idea you can cut and paste the pictures, just copy and paste. Boom, boom. You don't have to sit there figuring things out. The thing is, with uh, when I was using the uh, Microsoft Front Page 2002, it was a little not tricky, but it's a little it was a little different than here. This is more user friendly. That's what I like about it. And uh, like I said, I do use uh, the one page 2002 to do the when you see these ads there uh, let me just do it really quick I'll show you what I'm talking about I don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, when you see these things here I don't know if this is an update one. now I updated my templates I don't know if this is going to be the updated one let me see yeah uh, you see this here I did all this here uh, with the front page 2002 okay but you see I make it I try to make it basic you know I don't I the last one I had it looked too cartoonish <laughs> and uh, I made this one here pretty basic but I don't want to overwhelm the buyer, you know, looking at all this text and everything. Because I had so much stuff written down here. I mean, this is quite a bit, but I try to make it where you could see it, where you get clarity. Like I said, for my feedback, you could read the feedback. And you know something, folks, just a little thing here, just a little note too, in regards to getting negative feedbacks. You might want to put something like this in your ads. I put over here, please note before leaving any negative feedbacks, I would ask that you contact me first. I know it sounds kind of crazy, uh, to put something like that in there, but you know what? You never know. I mean, you know, you might get a buyer so pissed off <laughs> if you don't put anything like that there. They might just, you know, jump at the thing, you know. And as I always say here, uh, just, just if this helps out, if you help you guys, we always willing. Well, we always will work with our potential buyers and want them to be completely satisfied with their purchase. If for some reason you are not uh, sure of an item being auctioned and need additional information, please do not hesitate to contact us by email well it's not supposed to be email by messaging that has to be changed before placing a bids we will always answer your question in a timely manner and i just put in here a return policy will issue a full refund this i changed because I, I used to only have a full refund on new 
So I said we will issue a full refund on new and pre-owned merchandise if you're not completely satisfied. Combined shipments, and yeah, this is I did. I also did a video on buyers not reading the descriptions. Uh, I had to buy it. Now you can see it's highlighted in green and red, and it says combined shipments. We will continue. We will combine all shipment, you know, combined shipments on multiple, a multiplied permit uh, purchase and ship to the U.S. Postal, and it goes on and so forth. Um, I get, I get buyers saying, "Do you do combined shipments?" You know, it, 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 that, that proves one thing though. If they're doing, if they're questioning it, something like that, they're not reading the full description. So people might say, "Well, then if you put all that stuff there, it's done in vain." Look, I throw it out there. Okay, that's up to the buyer. If the buyer wants to, you know, read the whole description. Okay, and in closing, I just want to say one last thing. I'm going to close this video out. Um, before you make any purchases from me, read my feedbacks. I mean, it's simple enough. You go over here, read what people have to say. I tell people all the time in my videos. Read what you have to see here, like here. Just for example, this is it. Th this is all it'll take. You click on the number and you read what people have to say, okay? And if you like what these people say, then, you know, then fine. Then you, you may be very content in buying from me. But just read it. There's, you don't have to read all 978 feedbacks, but just read a couple of them. See what they have to say. You know, uh, is this guy good, bad, or in between? You know, some, like I said in the other video, uh, some people can leave you positive feedback, but they could have a little negativity thrown in there, the way it's worded. It may be, it could also sound like a neutral. Now, you might say, how is that possible? How can you turn a positive into a neutral or negative? It's the way it could be worded. It, it's the way it could be worded. It could be worded in a way where it's a positive feedback, but they may say, uh, for example, uh, seller is a good seller, but the item was okay. Okay? Or, you know, I, I thought I expected a little, so I thought it was going to be a little different, a little better condition than what was written. But they never left the negative feedback. They gave you a positive. But because the way they worded it, it may be a negative, it may sound like it to, to the average person. It might say, oh, it sounds like they wanted to leave a negative or a neutral, but they put it in a positive. They're kind of like being nice. You know what I'm saying? So read the feedbacks. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to read all of them. Okay? There's a guy out there that. That's got thousands and thousands of feedbacks. I don't expect you to read them, but the only thing I will say is, um, I, me personally, um, I will only buy uh, merchandise if I do buy, which is very rare. Uh, not very rare, but very, you know, I, I only buy ink toner cartridges and um, ink cartridges, you know, for my printers. Uh, I will buy from a top rate seller with 100% feedback. I'm not saying anything bad. Like I said, again, I'm not saying anything bad or making any negative remarks towards sellers that have you know, 99.5, 99.7, whatever. I'm just trying to say, me, this is me personally, it's my preference. When I buy, I like to buy from a, a top rated seller that has 100%. And if I do land on one and the, and the guy is offering a good price and he just, he's still top rated, but he has a 98 or 97, whatever it is, um, I want to read what the negative was okay i want to read why why was it returned why did the why was the buyer happy with your service you're a top rate seller why was the buyer happy with your service what caused that what caused the buyer to leave you negative and then the other thing is a key thing i always look for is what was the seller's respond to the negative feedback was the seller nasty did the seller come out and say oh well you know whatever you know i don't know but i always like to look at those key, those key issues right there when it comes to a negative feedback you could be a top rate seller and even though you get one negative feedback, I had it. I had it. I, I told you, I had it. I was still top rated. It was 99.9 .9 or 99.7 or 8, whatever it was. I was still top rated. But that one negative is what, you know, would really hurt because I'm trying to maintain this here. And again, it could have been my fault too because the way I had messaged the buyer, not in a bad way, but the way it sounded, it probably sounded bad, you know, to the buyer. So that's why the buyer, probably, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to leave this guy a negative feedback. You know, but I reached out, like I said, I reached out to the buyer. The buyer was nice enough to, you know, we have the negative removed. And you could do, I think, through eBay has a thing where you can try to, I think you can have it removed, but you got to contact them. I think it eBay allows you to do because that's what I did. You got to read up in there little, uh, you know, rules and regulations and all the little clauses in there. But I think they had a thing in there where you can uh, contact the buyer. And it's at the buyer's discretion if they want to leave you. To recant or retract that negative feedback. If they don't, the worst thing that happens, folks, is depending when it happens, because I called up eBay, I said, how does that work with the negative feedback? When does it get removed? If you did a transaction on January 1st of 2017, 
it will come off on January 1st, 2018. It's there for a whole year. So everybody that goes on your listings, not that I'm saying it's the worst thing, because people can still buy from you. But it all that you know, they'll see that negative feedback for a whole year. Now, it would be nice <laughs> if eBay could cut the duration down and keep it instead of a whole year, maybe keep it there for maybe a month or maybe a couple of weeks and then take it off. You know what I'm saying? See what happens, you know. But uh, like again, it's their website, you know, you're on their platform and you're gonna buy by their rules or go elsewhere, okay? But um, I know there's been a little thing there with the feedback uh, as far as I think. I know that's been bothering people. The eBay radio segment, um, if I get a chance, maybe I'll put that on there, but you could do it yourself. Uh, you could check it out on eBay radio. Uh, just check out, go through the archives and uh, you'll see the one. One more time, I just wanna give it to you guys one more time uh, in case you wanna listen to it for yourself. Where is that paper? I just had it. Oh, here it is. It's um, it's the uh, Ask Griffin Lee, and it's from August. It's the August twenty fourth one. It's the uh, show. It's the August twenty fourth show four seventy one segment four. Okay, listen to that there. Listen to the seller and Griff, who is he's also an employee at eBay. Uh, read the little back and forth what they're going through. Okay. Uh, then you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll get a little more insight, a little more clarity as for as far as like why eBay does what they do. Okay, um, like I said, I like eBay. I you know I, I've been doing this year a little more. I've been I've been on eBay since uh, July of 1999, but on and off. I'm nothing special. Uh, there's no big thing. I haven't been on this thing for years. I mean, I've been on it for years, but on and off. Uh, that's why I have very small, uh, you know, feedback. My total feedback should be about 16, 1700, okay? Uh, but as you can see, if you take that number, as I said in my other videos, if you take that 1700 uh, items I sold, subtract them from the 978, that's how many people didn't leave me any feedback. So, you know, that's why I show such a small amount. But I mean, I'm sure people I think for a person for 19, since 1999, you would think they would have thousands and thousands, like 30,000, 20, no, they, um, back then, eBay didn't mean nothing to me, okay? I did it just to get rid of stuff in the house, to get rid of the kids' old toys or whatever it was. It didn't mean nothing to me. It was just like, I make a few bucks here and there as pocket money, you know? You make a few bucks to maybe buy a, <laughs> go to McDonald's and get something to eat or something. It wasn't it wasn't my thing. I had a full-time job, and uh, I had other things to do, you know, raising kids and, you know, the wife and kids and stuff like that. You know, I don't have time to sit there and devote to eBay. Some people say, well, I could do both. Well, back then, I didn't have the time for it. It wasn't my interest, you know. I didn't care about eBay at the time. Now it's a different story. I'm older, the kids are older, everybody's older, everybody's doing their own thing. Now I can devote more time to this here. And let alone, you know, being laid off from your job back in uh, June of 2016 last year, uh, that kind of, like I said, projected me or propelled me into doing this full time. So I'm taking a part-time passion that I was doing on and off and now it became a full-time passion. How long it's gonna work out? Uh, if I could, you know, make it with this, doing this thing here, you know, making money here and there and doing it as a regular business, uh, that'd be great. If not, um, will I like going back to a nine to five job working in a corporate world again? I don't think so. That's not really what I want to do. I mean, I always, pat my passion was always to be in my own business and this has given me that opportunity. Uh, I hope it could start off small and lead into something big. Be like, it'd be nice to be like Amazon, right? I mean, here's a guy who's selling books on a website or whatever, and uh, look how look how one thing looked. I'm not saying that's going to be me. I'm just saying it would be nice. It's a dream. It's a dream. Okay, um, you know what's that saying? You got to have a dream in order for a dream to come true. But uh, that would be nice, though. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there, resellers and buyers, would probably love to do something like that. Have a little website or sell stuff, and then your business balloons into a multi-billion-dollar business. That'd be nice, really nice. But anyway, um, that's the end of that story. I will talk to you guys in the next video. And, uh, you know, if you guys like what I do, I know I'm, I'm inching up there. I'm inching up to you guys uh, to that 99, uh, to 100 mark there. I'm up at 98. Uh, I hope I don't have any people backing off, you know, dropping off from me. If they do, maybe they just don't like my videos. If, they, if it goes up to 100, that'd be great. I'm trying to, trying to get that 100 mark. I don't know. To me, I like, I like even numbers. I like round numbers, you know, 100, 200, whatever it is. I like to have 200,000. All right, I'll let that two million, whatever. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'm just saying. Um, I hope you guys like the videos I put out. This reseller news type of thing here, I've done them, if you look at my other, I have do, I do the reseller news on occasion. 
I would like to do maybe, like I said, I keep talking about it. I don't want to keep throwing out because people say, hey, whatever happened? I thought you guys were going to do the reselling. You know, you're going to do the reselling news on a daily basis or a weekly roundup, and you never do. Um, that's why I said it's kind of like a wishy-washy thing. It all depends on how much time I have to do this stuff. So, um, yeah, it would be nice to do the, uh, you know, uh, a reselling news like that. But anyway, guys, I'm going to let you go. I don't want to rattle on too long here. Um, I do have other things I want to take care of. So if you like the video, guys, and you got anything out of it, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I know there's a lot of good people out there. For those who landed on this channel, if it's your first time, uh, and you, you know, if you like, you like the content, you want to give them a thumbs up, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, I'd love to have you as some subscribers. If there's anything that you guys want to leave in a comment, uh, you want to see me talk about different topics, or you got other questions about certain things, you don't want to ask me personally, I don't, you know, I don't mind. If I could help out in any way I can, uh, I do the reselling, like I said, I do the reselling news to just throw its little tidbits of information out there just to give you guys a little insight, you know, as to what I have. Anyway, I will talk to you next video, guys. You have a great day. Um, and I hope uh, that, you know, what's going on with the Florida, the storm coming at Irma. Uh, there's a lot of crazy things going on with the weather and stuff. Uh, you know, we could only keep our prayers and hopes for them over there and all the other places that's getting hit by it. So, um, you know, let's keep them in our prayers as far as that part goes. It's, you know, they're gonna, I don't know how devastating it's going to be, but from what I've been hearing on the news this morning, it's not going to be a good thing. So, uh, my prayers and thoughts go out to them. And I hope everything works out for them. You take care, guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.